I want to talk about a topic that is it's something everybody needs. And that is right now, right here, this moment, it is time to grow. It's springtime and y'all know, I'm sure everybody on here follows me, but we've got um, all this land and Kevin, last year we planted a pretty big garden. Well, this year we've got two gardens and he and we have been like in the middle of building this house and closing up this house. And we have not really had time for a lot of stuff, but he took a whole weekend. And well, the weekend prior, we went to this farm supply thing and we bought seeds and we bought plants. And um, then he came home and he tilled up all the soil in these two huge gardens. This is not small stuff. This is, these are huge. I don't even know how, I don't even know how many, how many square feet each one is, but I think one of them is, he'll, do you know, babe? He's standing right there. How big are the gardens? 75 feet by like 60 feet or each one of them. One is 75 by 100. Sorry, I was a little off. And the other one is pretty close to the same. It, it's twice that, he said. So we got these huge gardens. So we went and bought a ton of seeds and bought a ton of plants. Then he had to till all the soil up. Then he had to prep the soil, like put manure with the soil and make the soil to where it would absorb the seed and grow the seed. He had to rake all the crap out, all the rocks out and stuff. He had to pull all the weeds um, and get all the roots and stuff that he tilled up. Then he had to go through and he took his little planter thing and he pushed it and it drops the seeds every so often. Then he had to go and cover it all up. Then you have to go and water it. Well, that's just in the first weekend. Now, like, all the time he's having to water and then weed. And then we have the storm come through. So the fence that he had around it falls down. He had to go and fix the fence, put all the fencing back up so the rabbit and the deer didn't get in to eat all the plants that he had spent all this time planting. And so then now it's water and weed, water and weed, water and weed, water and weed. And the other day, well, I think it was day before yesterday, we got there and where he planted the seeds, we're seeing little green, like little green tops where it's growing. And it's, it is not easy. And as, as um, I'll be out there helping him pretty soon too. Um, but it is hard work to grow something. It is not like you can just go throw some seeds out and then hope to goodness something grows. This doesn't work like that. It's got, it takes a lot of preparation. And Denzel Washington did a, um, he was the speaker at a graduation ceremony. And one of the things he said was hard work works. Hard work works. You get what you work for, not what you wish for. I mean, we could wish all day long. Oh, I wish I had a big garden. I wish that we could throw some seeds out and it would grow. But you can't just wish for something. You've got to work hard for something that you want. And without hard work, nothing grows but weeds. So we're going to talk today. I'm going to give you four things that it is time to grow. Okay. And this is things that are going to all help us grow our business. And the first thing is it is time to grow intellectually. And your personal growth up here, what you put up here, how you grow up here is critical. It's not optional. It is critical. It is a must have for your business growth. And for what, um, gosh, I don't even know. Um, I think there's seven, seven or eight things that I came up with that help you grow intellectually. The first one is you've got to read more. And you've got to practice what you learn. So that's what Stacy was talking about. When you come to this Super Saturday training, you've got to apply the things that you learn and do them over practice is doing things over and over and over and over and over again. And practice doesn't make perfect because nobody's ever perfect. 
but practice sure does make things a lot easier. And one of the boys has a sign in their um, in their bedroom that says, playing baseball doesn't get easier. You just get better. You know, it never, as, as you grow, they're all playing, they're both playing baseball, but it never gets, it, the game doesn't get easier. You just get better at it. It's the same thing with what you have to do when you learn stuff, you got to do it over and over again. It doesn't become easier if you just get better at it. So it's not, so it becomes more simple. Um, journal, journaling, writing things down. Because the more you write things down, the more you retain things. Talking to people, having a mentor, um, becoming friends with people that know more than you. That helps you become intellectual. Um, oh, here's a big one. Attending trainings. And y'all being on here tonight, you can check that off tonight. But it's not just this. It's every thing that you can find time for. And when you're at night, go back and watch recordings of Room at the Top. Go back and, and listen to recordings of Nine at Nine. Go back and do, listen to the trainings and watch the recordings all in for Founders Club. They're all on the on the um, Founders Club board. We do them, we put them on there every Thursday night. Go back and watch it because that helps you grow intellectually. And then learn to build on your strengths and work on your weaknesses. That right there is one that will really, really help you grow. Because if you can identify your strengths and play on those and use them every day, but you, if you can also identify your weaknesses and that become the thing, just take one, one thing that you don't think you're good at and work on that one thing that will help you grow intellectually. You have got to attend you got to show up to go up. I love the topic that Russ is doing because you've got to show up. You've got to be present. You've got to have, um, you've got to have your mindset there. So pe you, people can pour into your head so you can see, so you can hear, so you can experience, so you can feel the emotion. All that helps you grow. Um, get a mentor. If you don't have a mentor of, of somebody that is where you want to be and does, does things that you admire, does things that you want to, you know, that, oh my gosh, I wish I could, I wish I could talk like her. Or I wish I could train like him, or I wish I could, um, I wish I was at this rank. Find your mentors, ask them how they got there and become a, like a sponge. That's what I did to get to where I wanted to go. I found the people who were in higher ranks than me and I kept stalking them. I kept calling them. I kept bugging them. They, I felt like I was bugging them, but they never acted like it. But I wanted to know what they were doing that I wasn't doing to help me get there. Um, you've got to spend personal time developing your mind every single day. If it's 15 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, whatever it is, Spend time every single day developing your mind and doing those things, reading and journaling and talking and listening to trainings and practice and um, and and connecting with the people who are where you want to go and learning how to work on your weaknesses and build on your strengths. You've got to do it every day. You've got to spend time every day developing your mind because when you grow intellectually, you know what that you know what what happens when you do that. That causes you to become more confident. And confidence is attractive to people. And that will, that will draw people in and that will want people, that will make people want to be a part of what you, what you have. So number one, it's time to grow intellectually. Number two, y'all, I feel like such a hypocrite talking about this, but this is absolutely important. It is time to grow physically. It is time to use our products get to your goal weight and become a walking billboard. And I am preaching to myself, but I will tell you eight days. Uh, this is my eighth day and I have done really, really good, but your body is the, is, is so important to your business, your own body, because we sell weight loss products. Hello. We sell health and wellness products. So if you don't look like a picture of health and wellness, then that ain't going to grow your business. So Work on you, work on what you're putting into your body. And it's a choice just like everything else. It is a personal choice that you make every single day. 
You have to make a choice not to eat the crap. You've got to make a choice to exercise. You've got to make a choice to um, to to have the results, to have the before and after pictures. People want to see your results. They don't want to see pictures that you made two years ago that you've been posting for four years. They want to see your they want to see your results, your current results. So you've got to continually work on you. You've got to do that. This 30 day challenge, I don't know if everybody's doing one, but I know there's um, me and, uh, of this team, me and Christy and Stacy are all doing this 30 day challenge. And um, right now it's day eight. Me and Kevin have been doing it for eight days and we have kicked its booty. Like we have done so good, but we got 22 days, 22 days left in this challenge. And guess what? We ain't stopping after that. We're going to keep going and we're going to keep going. But who will commit, like really commit to the next 22 days of this 30 day challenge or however many days that you have left till the end of May? Who will commit to the end of May to consciously make an effort to work on your body and physically grow every single day? I want to see a show of hands. Who will commit to that? I'm seeing hands. I see I am committing. You can write it in the comments. That's so important to your business. Okay. So the next thing, number three. Here we go. I'm sure I understand. Well, I'm not either. So um, it is time to grow partners. You, it, it's just like Stacy almost did my whole training. I was just like, you have got to get comfortable talking about this business. You have to. You have got to tell your story, so your business story so often that it rolls off your tongue effortlessly, just like your product story does. I mean, we were, they were, he was right. We were talking about that today. And it's so easy to tell your product story because you've done it so many times. I mean, I can do it like with uh, a blindfold on one hand, one hand tied behind my back and standing on one leg. I can tell that, I can tell my product story. But for some reason, it's hard to talk about the business story. It's hard to talk about money. And I don't know why. It, we have got to make it so effortless that it just rolls off just like this. And like Christy said, two minutes or less. You should be so convinced about this business changing lives that you can't help but want everybody to know. You, you have a gift and guess what? It is an endless supply of this gift. The gift never runs out. So it was just like, if, what if you could like at Christmas, what if you had, oh my God, like think of the greatest gift, like a KitchenAid mixer. I mean, that is a good gift. That would be a good, or an Instapot. Taylor wants to give me an Instapot. I don't know if y'all have one or not, but it's got the crock pot and the fryer and the pressure cooker and all of this in one. So what if you have an Instapot that you could give to as many people as you want? As soon as you give one, you got another one. It just pops up and you can give it to another person. You need, how many Instapots would you give out? If you had an endless supply, would you not be going to everybody saying, oh, I the greatest gift here's and it's the pot and it's the pot for you and it's the pot for you and it's the pot for you i mean wouldn't you be giving it to every single person that you could come across i mean if you had an endless supply of this amazing gift why aren't you doing that with a business that can give them a thousand bucks a month two thousand dollars a month five thousand dollars a month why are you not going out and giving this endless supply to every single person, every single person that's working a second job, every single person that's door dashing, every single person that's driving an Uber, every single person that's working retail, every single waitress. Why are you not so excited about what you have and knowing it can change their life that you are not just busting down their door to try to give it to them? Because we do. We have something a lot better than an Instapot. We have something a lot better than a brand new car. We have something life-changing that can change the trajectory of someone's entire financial future. We should, we should be so convinced that 
this is the best thing since last bread that we cannot wait to give it to somebody and then give it to the next person and give it to the next person. We should not be going anywhere without talking this up and telling people, you want what I have. I have got the greatest thing, the gift of a legacy. Give the gift of a legacy. That's it. Um, getting partners is not going to happen by default. It's got to, it's, it's got to be intentional. You have got to intentionally seek people out and intentionally talk about it, intentionally tell your story. And if you aren't excited about this business, you got to work on that first. If you don't have the believability that this will change someone's life, you got to work on that first because your, um, your excitement and your belief is going to make people want what you have. So if you're not like over the top excited and you don't just believe with every fiber of your being that every single person walking on the face of this earth needs an extra 500 bucks a month, you got to work on this right here. You got to work on that first before anybody's ever going to want to have what you have because that excitement breeds excitement. That excitement is contagious. People want to be a part of something that they, that especially when you believe it so much, they'll believe it. So next, number four, it is time to grow relationships. This is something we've been talking about for a while, um, but are you doing it? We've been saying for weeks now on this Monday night, we got to get on the phone. Are you doing it? How many phone calls have you made this week? I'm not saying messages. I'm not saying texts. How many phone calls have you made this week? How many face-to-face -face visits have you had with someone this week? You've got to grow your relationship with your customers. You've got to grow relationships with your partners, especially your partners. You've also got to grow relationships with your prospects. People buy stuff from people that they trust. So grow the relationships. Find out their why. Find out um, what they need. Find out why they need it. And give them the solution. Because you have it. doesn't matter what in the world it is that they need. You've got the answer. In your hands, you got the answer. Um, you got to find out about their family. Find out about what, um, what they love. Find out about what drives them. That's how you build a relationship. Most of the time, building a relationship is as much about listening as it is about talking. Find out about that person. They, they, people love to talk about themselves. And then keep a notepad when you're talking to them. So when you go back and call them again in a few days, because you can't build a relationship with one phone call, cannot, will not happen. So when you go back in a couple of days to call them again, then you can call their kids by name. You can call their husband by name. You can ask about something that they talked about in this phone call. That's how you build a relationship going back and forth and remembering things that are important to that person. Um, it's about spending time with people. Go to lunch, take them to coffee, meet them for breakfast. Do team get-togethers. Show up for Super Saturday. Become a part of the team. Bond with your team. Introduce your people to other people. Surround yourself with like-minded people. And grow relationships with everybody you come in contact with. Get to know people. And especially face-to-face. -face. I mean, when you're at the grocery store and talking to your waitress, find out a couple of things about her. And compliment her. Make her feel safe. Make her feel good. Make her trust you. About the things that you say, get her on your Facebook and then reach out a couple of days. I mean, you can grow a relationship with anybody that you come in contact with. The best way in the whole world to grow a relationship is to become a servant leader. And Mark talks about this. Um, Mark Walker talks about this all the time. He wrote the I am singular creed. That I am singular tells you exactly what to do to build relationships and to form a team that people want to be a, a part of. And I'm going to see if I can find this real quick. So can y'all still see me? I think you can, because I think we tried this the other day. So hang on one second. 
I'm gonna, I should have already had this pulled up, but I don't. It's in my boards and I will find it in two seconds. Christy probably has it right there. Let me see. Um, I think it's under business. Oh crap. Oh, there it is. It says we have to be nice when others are not. We have to be inclusive when others are exclusive. We have to be kind when others are mean. We have to love when others hate. We have to forgive when others hold grudges. We need to stand strong when others wilt. We need to shine when others fade. We are going to change the world because we are examples of all that is good. We will be that light on the hill and show others how to truly live because we are singular. That will build relationships. When you are those things, and you're treating people like that, that's going to make people want to be around you. That's going to make people want to be a part of what you have. And there was a, um, Kevin Scott preached yesterday at our church and he was, he was doing a graduation ceremony and he was talking about, I can't even remember the, whoever it was, that was the um, graduation speaker. And he went up on, he was, he was a, uh, um, I think it was his valedictorian and, or of the of the college or whatever it was, but he went up to the stage and he leaned over on the podium and looked at that class and he said, "Never give up." And everybody just screamed and clapped and stuff. And they they finally got quiet and he said, "Never give up." And they jumped to their feet and they screamed again. And he leaned over and he said, never give up. He went and sat back down. That was his whole speech. That's all he said was never give up. And that's what we, we have got to get that mindset. We have got to get that mindset that it may take time. It may, you may have to pull a lot of weeds. You may lose some seed to the, to the, or lose some plants to the rabbits. You know, it, you may have to water or storms may come or something may happen, but you can never give up on yourself because when, if you walk away from your singular business, that is you saying that you can't do that. You're giving up on yourself. And that is not, that is not a good thing to do. Because if you give up, if you give up on yourself, who's going to be there to fight for you? You got to fight for yourself. You got to fight through the hard times. You got to fight through all the, all the crap, all the, all, everything that you've got to go through to plant your garden and to grow. But you know what? There's nothing you can't do. If you decide that you're going to do it because hard work works. No one said it's going to be easy. It is definitely, it's simple. It's not easy. It is a lot of work, but whatever you put into it, you're going to get out of it. And that I promise you. So it's time to grow intellectually every single day. It's time to grow physically and do your, do your products and get your body and get your results every single day. It's time to bring in partners and grow partners every single day. And it's time to grow relationships every single day. And my question is, I'm ready. Are you? Are you ready to grow? Because I don't know about you, but I'm tired of being a luby plant. I want a big, huge corn stalk that has a lot of ears of corn on it. The good corn, silver queen corn, the good stuff. Are you ready to go? Put it in the comments if you're ready. Just say, me, I'm ready to go. Does anybody have any anything that they want to add or anything that they want to say other than you're ready to go? All right. Well, I am going to end this by declaring Ephesians 3.20 over all of you. God is going to do exceedingly and abundantly more than we can think or ask because we honor him. His blessings are going to chase us down and overtake us. We are in the right place at the right time. And I declare a boldness to rise up in each one of you. God is going to open supernatural doors. People are going to seek us out and we're going to rise in the ranks because we give him the honor and glory for it. 
I love y'all. Have a great night.